I get a lot of requests from viewers asking me where they can download drivers, games, tools and other software that I use in my videos. Usually I can just give them a link to a website where they can download said software, but some of the patched or customized software I use in my videos is not hosted anywhere. Therefore, since the channel's inception, I've been thinking of setting up a website to go along with it. A place where viewers of the channel can download the software I use in my videos, as well as many other PalmTop specific downloads, and also pages with links to forums, tutorials, and more. There's nothing special or unique about creating a modern website hosted on a contemporary web server like running Linux or Windows. And even a slow system like a Raspberry Pi nowadays can serve a decent website. But this isn't the Raspberry Pi Tube channel, is it? Nope, as crazy and impossible as it might sound, a website about retro palm tops should be hosted on a retro palm top. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video, introducing you to my new website, fully hosted on an HP 200LX DOS palm top, and showing you in detail how I built this setup. During the last few months, I've been experimenting with various ways to host a website on a 200LX. And after evaluating all the options, I've decided to run my web server software on DOS. Some of you might be thinking, what about your Minix setup? Wouldn't that be a more suitable operating system for such an endeavor? And that would be correct. A Unix-like, multi-user, preemptive multitasking operating system like Minix is ideal for running a web server, were it not for the severe memory limitations of the 200LX and DOS Minix 2.0, which I demonstrated in my previous Minix video. Due to the severe limitations of an XT-class machine, like the 200LX, only about 600 kilobytes of memory is available to Minix when started from DOS. And with the kernel compiled with networking support enabled, which takes up approximately 230 kilobytes when running, only about 370 kilobytes of memory is available, of which another 180 kilobytes is used by the Minix user space slip or PPP processes for internet access, leaving only 190 kilobytes available, which is simply too small to run even the simplest of Unix web servers. Another issue is that Minix requires a compact flash card for its file systems, which take up at least 40 megabytes. And, due to the PCMCIA slot being occupied for storage, connecting the system to the internet is only possible with the serial port. And I've only managed to achieve a top speed of about 38,400 baud, which is the maximum speed, and it's much too slow. Imagine several visitors browsing the website when the web server's internet connection can only carry a few kilobytes a second. It would take several minutes for the web pages to load. So, with Minix out of the question, instead, I decided to use MTCP's HTTP serve, a simple static HTTP server for MS-DOS, written by Michael Bratman. But first, before we go into detail, a word about security. All the IP addresses and many of the configuration details you'll see in this video are fake. And I won't disclose some file locations and information about some of my supporting hardware. However, I will make sure that the fake configuration details are viable for a working setup like mine. So any viewers who would like to replicate this setup themselves have all the information they need from this video. Okay, so let's go over the list of basic items I will need to set up a simple, fast and reliable web server at home. So first, we need an internet connection with a static IP. Now, at my home, I have a gigabit fiber internet connection with a static IP address. Having a static IP is much better than using a dynamic one with a dynamic DNS service. It's simpler to implement and is much more reliable. Then, we will need a domain name, 
So I'm really lucky that palmtube.com was still available. So I went ahead and bought the domain on godaddy.com and configured the GoDaddy hosted DNS records to direct traffic from my website at www.palmtoptube.com to my static IP address at home. Then we need a suitable palm top um, to run our web server software on. So I'll be using a stock HP 200LX with two megabytes of RAM and a double speed crystal installed for a CPU clock speed of 16 megahertz. The additional speed is really useful as it nearly doubles the throughput speed of the web server. I also have an original mains power adapter powering the palm top so it can run 24 7 indefinitely. And what's cool about this setup is that the two rechargeable AA batteries inside the palm top can act as a UPS should there be a power outage for many hours if needed. And since all other hardware like my fiber terminal, router and switch are connected to a separate UPS, my website will be available during a power outage. Then we need a network card for the palm top. So I've decided to use the Netgear FA411, which is a 16-bit PCMCIA Ethernet card. Now this card is NE2000 compatible, for which there are specific drivers available for the 200LX. During some tests, I managed to achieve an average of about 250 kilobytes per second when transferring a large file via HTTP with this network card which is approximately 50 times as fast as using a slip or PPP connection using a serial port. So next we need a separate network for security purposes. So I've created a separate isolated Ethernet network with its own 8-port Netgear switch. So if anyone gains access to any of the machines on this network, they can't access my private home network. And then finally we need an HTML website. I've spent quite a few days designing a modern website with image resolutions fit for browsing on a 4K display. I've carefully written the HTML to be compact and I've used Photoshop to create all my images and used its save for web functionality to try to make my images as small as possible. At the time of this video's premiere, there are a few pages that are not finished yet and have an under construction message on them, as well as the actual downloads page. This is because I'm going to use a second 200LX palm top as an anonymous FTP server. Having two palm tops, one serving the website and one serving the large files of the download area using FTP, will keep the website responsive when multiple large downloads are being served at the same time by the FTP server. Now I will be releasing a second video in a few weeks which will demonstrate the configuration of the FTP server and when it's online the download section will be updated and I will start building over the next few months a comprehensive archive of software, tools, drivers, games and more for HP DOS and Psyon palm tops on the downloads page of the site. So let's have a look at the whole setup in this diagram. As you can see, any incoming HTTP connection on TCP port 80 is forwarded by my router to the internal IP address of the 200LX palm top. HTTP serve, the MTCP web server software, will using the packet driver for PCMCIA NE2000 network cards, analyze the request received from the visitor and send the required file back to the visitor. HTTP serve only supports HTTP GET requests and is only able to serve static files. It does not support POST requests required for forms and submitting variables and is usually used for dynamic content such as PHP, Ruby or ASP pages that create dynamic content usually in conjunction with an SQL database server. 
Since my website doesn't require any dynamic content, static pages and get requests are all I need. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at the configuration and setup of the web server on the 200LX Palm Top. So as you can see, I've got my Palm Top here. I have inserted the Netgear FA411 Ethernet card and I have it connected with a Category 6 UTP cable to my 8 port switch, which is not in view. Uh, which is basically my special uh, dedicated network for web servers. Um, so let's have a look at the contents of our C drive. Now I need to use the C drive, the internal RAM drive of the system for all the storage at the moment because the PCMCIA slot is in use by the Netgear uh, Ethernet card so I cannot insert my normal compact flash storage so I have to keep everything on the internal RAM drive of the palm top. Now the software and the drivers and the website are all very efficient and very small so that is uh, not an issue at this time and I can always upgrade the system by adding a memory expansion board in the future should it be necessary. But for website content there is another option that we will explore later on in the video. So if you zoom in here and you take a close look at the contents of the C drive you will see I have my autoexec.bat and my config sys file as usual. These are just standard uh, setups. The config sys file just contains the driver for the double speed crystal and the autoexec.bat contains nothing special except the fact that at the end it launches the next batch file which is called net.bat. Now if we have a look at net.bat we will see I'll just open it here in the text editor. So this is the start of the file. First thing we set the mtcp cfg to cnet mtcp 200.cfg which is an environment variable that tells the mtcp suite of applications where its configuration file is located. Then we launch lxkick.com which is the updated enabler that supports generic PCMCIA 16-bit any 2000 compatible network cards. And that will simply enable the card so it becomes visible to the driver. And then we load the driver, LXEN2216, and we give it 0x66 as an argument. Uh, this is the software interrupt of the driver. We can specify any uh, suitable number here. I've chosen 0x66 because most people usually use that one. That simply says that the driver needs to be installed and be available from that software interrupt location. Um, continuing, we have E3DFS. This is all remarked out. We will be coming back later to have a look at that. And then at the end of this file, it simply launches the next batch file, www.serve, which is responsible for starting up the web server. So if we go back to DOS and we have a look at that file, www.serve. Uh, so the www.serve.bat is very simple. It just starts our web server binary, which is CNET MTCP HTTP serve. And should this exit, it will just continue. And I've put a label called X here, and I just restart the server again. And should this exit for some reason, go to X, and it will just restart in an infinite loop. So if our web server crashes for some reason, and it exits, it will just automatically get restarted and will be running again. Now, I've been running this web server for about three weeks now and it has never crashed or exited on me. It has given me 100% uptime and it seems to be very stable.
Okay, so let's have a look at the directory uh, layout. So basically we have the batch files that I've just gone over. Uh, then we have the directory bin, which just contains my standard set of binaries that I use on all my palm tops. It contains the clockup 32sys driver for the double speed crystal, but nothing specific to uh, networking. Next we have the directory net, which contains the driver and enabler for the network card and a subset of the MTCP suite of applications. Next we have www.root, which is our web server root. So that directory contains the HTML files and the images for the website. And then we have the last directory www.zips, which is basically um, HTTP serve has this option to serve compressed files. So if you put say an HTML file in the web root and you put an identically named file in the www.zips root and you gzip that, um, the web server when it sees that there is a copy of it in www.zips it will serve that one instead. So it can serve files that are gzip which are much more compact especially for HTML files. It, it doesn't make sense to do it with PNG and JPEG files as they are already compressed. So that basically makes the serving of large HTML files much faster. Next, we're gonna have a look at this net directory. So this contains the LXKick enabler uh, that we used in the net.bat file as well as the LXEN2216 driver that we used in the bat file. Um, if we go into the directory MTCP, we can see the MTCP binaries that I'm using on this system. Now, I don't have all of them on here um, because for security reasons it's best to just keep everything as minimal as possible and only install what you need. Um, so basically we have DHCP which is a DHCP client for obtaining a dynamic IP address but I'm not using that at the moment. I use a static IP which is a very good idea with a web server. Um, then we have HTTP serve which is the actual web server and I also have an HTTP new, which is a newer version that I'm currently also experimenting with, but they're both nearly identical. Then we have our ping command, which is useful for diagnosing network issues, and an SMTP command, which is useful to set the system time and date uh, from, a web, from a server on the internet that runs the NTP protocol. And then we have the most important file of all, which is the 200.cfg, which is the configuration file for MTCP. Well, all the applications, the whole suite of MTCP. So let's have a look at that file in detail. Okay, so first things first. We need to say where the MTCP binaries can find the packet driver for our network card, which we loaded in net.bat and we assigned it to the interrupt 0x66. So we need to give that here, packet int 0x66. The MTU I've set to 1500, which is suitable for an, a fast ethernet connection. The host name is Felix. It doesn't really matter what you put there as long as it's, you know, a name. Next we have a number of options for software of the MTCP package that I won't be using like the FTP server and DHCP and stuff, but they're all remarked out as I'm not using them. This is the one of the most important parts of the file, the server options for the web server. So the server name is www.palmtoptube.com. Our HTTP docs directory, the web root containing our website, is c root. And then we have that HTTP zips directory, www.zips that I spoke about earlier. 
The server is to run on port 80, which is the standard ser server port for HTTP on TCP IP. And then uh, DIR cache is basically a 16 kilobyte cache for uh, HT access files, which I will show in a moment. Um, and then clients 8, which is the maximum, basically says how many uh, clients the server the, basically how many connection slots it has um, and can serve at the same time. Should more than eight connections arrive at the same time, the surplus will just get queued up and will be handled by the next available slot that becomes free that has finished serving its connection. So that's it basically. It's, it's really simple. It's just a few uh, settings um, and then the last part of the file here is the IP address configuration so I've just got a static IP address of 10.0.10.32 this is just a, a demo setup that I've created for this video it's not the actual uh, setup of my web server um, we have the standard net mask of you know 24 which is 255.255.255.0 and our gateway, my router, is 10.0.10.10 and the name server is the same because it also acts as a name server, DNS server. And we have the DHCP lease time, which is irrelevant because I'm using a static IP address configuration. Okay, so with the configuration file for MTCP uh, explained, we are just going to reboot the system and we will be able to see everything start up and the web server will configure itself and start up and start serving connections. So let's just do a control alt delete. And it'll just make a default to boot from the C from now on. So it will use the enabler, load the driver and start the HTTP serve. And that is now running. I'll just increase the contrast a little bit. You can see, so the server is started uh, it's had zero connections, zero active connections, and zero objects served. And it basically spits out its configuration and it's now waiting for connections on port 80. So if we actually start browsing, it will basically start listing its log here of the incoming connections. So that was the overview of the palm top configuration of the web server. Let's go back and see if this works. Okay, so let's see if everything works. So what I've done is I've connected my uh, PC that I'll be using to test the website via a VPN client to a VPN server in the United States so that I am going to be a proper outside visitor outside of my network and I will be testing everything this way uh, including the internet DNS setup for my domain uh, the public IP the forwarding from the public IP by my router to the palm top and of course the palm top itself serving the website so let's fire up uh, Google Chrome and enter the URL so HTTP www.palmtoptube.com and as you can see it loads up some of the images take a few seconds to load because there's quite a few of them especially the first time when you load the page and none of the website images that are repeated on all the pages are cached but it's pretty usable um, these um, youtube video links that you see here they're quite slow because they're actually loading from youtube directly but as you can see with the other pages um, it does load quite uh, fast the images sometimes take a few seconds to load but you know that's to be expected with such a slow web server but it is definitely usable I mean most of these images are all high resolution uh, scaled to be viewed on a 4k display so they're quite sharp and you know it's usually up to one or two seconds to load the whole page depending on you know the amount of images like if I do a full refresh of everything on this page you know I count about three to four seconds to load everything which you know it's pretty good considering 
you know, what old hardware we're using and the severe limitations of a palm top that's, you know, nearly 30 years old. So, um, yeah, that was the website working. So the next topic that I'm going to be addressing is the lack of security and how we can uh, set up uh, an additional server to provide HTTPS SSL encryption for our website. So until about a decade ago, only websites or web pages that required SSL encryption, such as online shops that process credit card payments, used HTTPS encrypted web pages. But nowadays, HTTPS is nearly universally used by all websites and has become a must-have for any website. With modern web browsers like Chrome or Edge, with their default settings, potential visitors to your site are greeted with a security alert page when trying to access your website via an unencrypted HTTP connection such as this one. Attackers might be trying to steal your information. Now that doesn't sound very welcoming and uh, uninformed and non-technical visitors will likely cancel their visit to your website as they're scared away with this rather ominous message. The second reason why having your website served over an encrypted connection with HTTPS is because modern search engines like Google prioritize HTTPS websites over HTTP websites when crawling and indexing new websites. Now unfortunately the HP 200 Alexa CPU lacks the muscle to encrypt and decrypt website traffic and the web server software I'm using doesn't even support it. So the only remaining option is to add a contemporary system such as a Raspberry Pi 3, which I will be using for this setup, and configure it to be an SSL reverse proxy server for our palm top. This is fairly easy to set up, as all we have to do is install Linux on the Raspberry Pi, install Apache 2 with SSL, set up the Apache configuration files, and use Apache's mod proxy to configure it to provide an SSL tunnel to and from the palm top serving the site. Now as you can see in this updated diagram, incoming HTTPS connections which use the port 443 are sent to the Apache server by the router. They are then decrypted and forwarded to the palm top which sends back the requested data which is then encrypted by the Apache web server and sent back to the visitor's web browser. Note that the reverse proxy server doesn't cache or store any of the website content. It always requests the data from the palm top, so every part of the website is still stored and served for every hit by the palm top. So let's take an in-depth look at setting up the Raspberry Pi to act as a reverse proxy server for our palm top next. Okay, so let's have a look at how to install the reverse proxy server on the Raspberry Pi. So what I have is a standard Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, I have installed uh, the default uh, recommended Linux operating system Raspberry Pi OS latest version. This is just uh, a demonstration setup that I've created for this video. My actual production uh, setup is a little bit different for security reasons, but most of it is, is essentially the same. Now, I'm not going to show in detail how to install Apache and everything in SSL because, you know, there are hundreds of tutorials that you can easily find via Google that already explain that in detail. And I want to keep this rather short, just basically show the essentials. So what you would do is you would when you've done installing your system, uh, you'd give it a name. I'm calling it Rex because the other one is a cat, basically Felix. So this one's going to be a dog. So I'm calling him Rex. Uh, you want to make sure that your networking is working. So I'm using the IP address 10.0.10.42, whereas the palm top is using 10.0.10.32 and both these systems are, as shown before in the video, uh, connected to the same switch, which is a dedicated separate network. 
so once you've set up your system, I recommend that you harden it. There are many tutorials available on how to do that. It's uh, something that I definitely recommend for security purposes. Um, I'm not going to show any of that here because, again, there are heaps of tutorials that cover that that you can find via Google. Just search for the name of your distribution and then security hardening and uh, you'll find tutorials to do that. So next what we want to do is, uh, depending on your Linux system with Raspberry Pi OS, we can just do app get update first to make sure that you know our package management system is up to date with the latest versions of everything. And once that is finished, we will be installing Apache 2 and OpenSSL. OpenSSL is the library that Apache 2 uses to do HTTPS SSL encryption. So apt-get install Apache 2 and OpenSSL. Now this is already installed, so um, you know, I, I don't need to do anything, um, so I'm, I'm just going to cancel. Uh, in fact, everything on the system is already installed and tuned and running. So I'm just going to show the setup rather than actually install everything and configure everything. So once Apache is installed, if you go to EDC Apache 2, you see a number of very important directories here. Um, the two most important ones are the site configuration files and the modules. So the modules, there is mod available and mod enabled. If I go to mod available, sorry, mods available, you can see all these modules that extend the core functionality of Apache 2. Um, and after you've installed Apache 2, in order to do what we're going to do today, you will have to enable a few of these. There are two ways to do that. You can either copy these module files uh, from the mods available directory to the mods enabled directory. And then next time Apache starts or restarts, it will load that module as well. Uh, or you can use the a2nmod command and then just the name of the module and then that does all that for you. Um, so that's how the modules work. So the ones we need to accomplish the reverse proxy is proxy. So you'll have to make sure you have proxy.load which is the module and proxy.conf which is its configuration and then proxy HTTP.load, which is the reverse proxy module that we'll be using. Um, of course, you need to have SSL and SSL conf uh, besides these three ones. Uh, so that you but normally if you install it, uh, like I showed you with app get install Apache 2 and open SSL, it should be installed by default. So once you have those modules uh, ready, you'll want to create your site configuration file. So I'm just going to go into conf available. And when you install um, um, Apache 2, um, you, you basically end up with, oh, sorry, I'm, it's actually sites available. Yeah, sites. So this contains a few example uh, template uh, site configuration files that you can use and there is an interesting one here default-ssl.conf which you can use as a template to set up your HTTPS server. So what I did was I copied that file to palmtoptube-ssl.conf and if we examine that file you'll see it says here if module mod SSL. So if this module is loaded, which it is because we've verified that it's in the mod enable directory, um, it then continues um, and we have virtual host. I'm just using the IP address 10.0.10.42 and port 443, which is the default internet port for HTTPS traffic. And then the rest you can basically just fill out like any other normal server. Um, so the 
webmaster email address the document route which actually doesn't really matter because we're not going to be using the document route um, so just leave that to the default document route which if you install apache 2 contains a, a simple page that shows you that you know your server is working uh, to test your server after you've installed it then we have server name, so our full name for our server is www.palmtoptube.com which is the DNS name that we will be using uh, from outside the internet connecting uh, through my router to this uh, server. Um, I've got some error and access logs that I've put in my Apache log directories. Uh, I made sure that my access log is of type combined so that I can run uh, one of the various tools that are available online uh, that allow you to analyze the log and build uh, web pages with graphs and all kinds of information that show you a lot about uh, the use of your um, server and where your hits are coming from, how much data you're pushing out, all kinds of interesting goodies to know. Uh, the rest you can basically leave everything that you don't know what it does um, just leave it to the defaults in here uh, so what I did was uh, in, in, instead of like self signing a certificate and or using any of the other ways that are available nowadays to get a free certificate online I just went ahead and bought a certificate at GoDaddy because I just want to have you know a dependable and clean setup uh, and when you do that, when you purchase an SSL certificate for your domain, the provider of that uh, will normally give you a zip file which contains a number of files that you should copy into uh, dash etc SSL and then certs uh, for the certificate PEM file and then private for the SSL cert palm top tube key which is the private key file. Um, then there is a chain file which contains like a bundle. This is also supplied uh, in that same zip file from your provider. Um, and then here, we don't really need these directories because we've already given them uh, these ones here because we've already given them here and here. And if we go down, just leave everything as it is. Uh, we don't need to make any modifications uh, to add certain files or anything because we're simply going to be forwarding everything. Nothing is going to be served by this server locally. Uh, so no file on this Raspberry Pi is going to be served by Apache. Uh, and then by the end here we have the most important settings. So if we have the mod proxy and proxy HTML modules installed you can do this and this is basically all you have to do these two lines to make the setup work so proxy pass and then we give slash so the whole site everything needs to be proxied to that address which is the IP address of our palm top uh, and then proxy pass reverse which is basically the result which comes back also for the whole route will be coming back from again the IP address of our palm top and these are the only two lines that you need to add to your uh, site configuration file to make the Apache 2 servers virtual host that we're currently defining act as the reverse proxy server. Now you could add for example caching in here um, but I'm not going to do that because that would kind of defeat the whole point of what I'm doing. I want to have no caching so that all the data that is requested is always served by the palm top. Now I have included an example here below which is currently remarked out as you can see. Should in the future the traffic to my website grow and it would reach a level which I don't think is going to be possible in fact at least for a few years because as you'll see later uh, when we show the statistics um, one palm top can actually serve quite a few people but anyway should the need arise in the future to have 
uh, more power. What you can do is you can load the mod proxy balancer module, which allows you to define a proxy balancer, which we have in this block. So proxy balancer, which I've called 200LX cluster. And then you can add one or more uh, IP addresses of uh, machines. Uh, for example, this is the current IP address of, uh, same as here, uh, of my palm top. And I've just added some non-existent example ones here. So I imagine that there are three palm tops and they have 32, 33 and 34, the last numbers of their IP address. That would then be defined as a balancer structure. And then we can do the exact same as we've done here below. But instead of saying proxy pass root and then the HTTP and then the IP address of the palm top, we just refer to that balancer called 200LX cluster. And what that will then do is it will distribute the incoming HTTPS requests over those three palm tops. So you will literally have three times the throughput. And this scales linearly. So if you add 50 of these balance members, you'll literally have a 50 times linear speed up. Um, and you'll be able to serve a lot of users. Of course, you have to keep in mind that the uh, SSL encryption is a bit costly. So, you know, uh, you'll have to upgrade the Raspberry Pi to a much stronger machine if you want to do that. So it can keep up with encrypting and decrypting all the traffic for those 50 uh, backend palm tops. But it is possible and I included this whole block here just to show you uh, that you can do that and it could be handy if you're trying to make a larger website run on 200LX palm tops. So that's basically it. And you know, once you've done all that, you're sure your modules are activated. So they're either copied to the uh, mods enable directory or you've used the A2N mod. Um, and what you've also need to do is your sites available aren't used. So you, if you look at sites enabled, these are being used by Apache. So you need to either copy your uh, palmtoptube ssl.com file to the sites enable directory so it will be used when Apache starts up or in my case I've just defined a link to it so this is the only uh, configuration file that Apache will load on startup so it will serve the SSL site that we've just defined and then all you need to do is Apache CTL restart Apache will restart and hopefully if you've configured everything properly it should work and you can test it out and if you try to load uh, the root of uh, say for example this dot 42 you will get your website because this will get forwarded to the palm top and the palm top will serve the content um, if it doesn't work, what you could do is you could go into var log and then there's an Apache 2 here. And here are my, uh, my logs that I showed you earlier on in the configuration file for the palm top tube virtual host. And you can usually figure out what's wrong by looking in the, like if you do a tail of the error log and you try to start it up again you'll probably see the reason why you might have made a typo or you've made an error in one of your files and also here there is the access log which basically shows all the incoming uh, requests for the virtual host and this is what you'll be needing to run log analysis tools on the uh, Raspberry Pi so you can uh, analyze your traffic and see what's going on. So that concludes my overview of how to uh, configure the reverse proxy on uh, Raspberry Pi Linux. 
on my Raspberry Pi 3. Hope you found it interesting and let's continue and have a look at some statistics and see what our little palm top is capable of in terms of performance. Okay, so let's have a look at the performance that we're getting from our palm top web server. So what I've done is I've created this little born shell script you can see here, um, which is just an infinite while loop which using the wget command, uh, which is a tool that allows you to download files from HTTP or HTTPS URLs on the command line on Linux. And it just uh, fetches uh, indefinitely the files you can see on the for line. So this is just a mix of HTML pages and JPEG images, all with an average of about 40 kilobytes in size and what I did was I installed it on a fast Intel based Linux PC and I ran for a period of about five days uh, 12 instances at the same time of this script which just continuously pounded the palm top with HTTPS requests and above the script you can see the table uh, which shows four days uh, of full activity. So this really is the maximum that our palm top server uh, can push out towards HTTPS clients. As you can see, uh, on average, um, about 377,000 hits, about 15.23 gigabytes per day. So with this information, let's have a look at the hits first. So from uh, this information and a few other off-screen tests, I've compiled these tables. And you can see with uh, direct connection, HTTP, unencrypted, we can, we're getting approximately five and a half hits a second, uh, about 328 a minute, about 20,000 nearly per hour and uh, yeah nearly half a million a day um, and if we use HTTPS so we're connecting through the reverse SSL proxy uh, running on the uh, Rasp Raspberry Pi um, we are getting approximately uh, nearly four and a half hits per second 261 a minute and instead of you know 19,707 we're getting about 15,715 per hour and 377,180 a day which you know is a pretty decent uh, amount of hits being served for such a small and slow and old palm top uh, next we're going to have a look at the bandwidth or throughput of our 12 infinite loop scripts running. So for direct connection via HTTP to the palm top, uh, the system basically pushes out an average of 222 kilobytes of data per second. About 13 megabytes a minute, nearly 800 megabytes per hour, and nearly 20 gigabytes a day. And you know, that's quite, I'm quite happy with that. You know, it's a pretty decent performance for a system based on an, an XT architecture. Um, when we go through the reverse SSL proxy, um, you can see the speed goes down, of course, because there's, you know, the additional step involved on, on Rex, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we get 177 kilobytes a second and you know, about 10 megabytes a minute and a bit lower 635 megabytes per hour 15 gigabytes a day which is still you know pretty good very acceptable I mean imagine the kind of performance we would get if I were to use the serial port uh, it would literally be 40 times as slow and then for the upcoming video about my FTP server that will be coming after this video uh, I have done some offline tests with the FTP server and I managed to get uh, with a large file download in binary mode an average throughput speed of nearly 300 kilobytes a second, 294 kilobytes a second in fact. 
which seems to be the absolute maximum speed that the system uh, can push data out of its network card. And so, you know, if people will be using that FTP server to download files, they'll be able to download up to nearly 18 megabytes a minute and about a gigabyte per hour, about 25 gigabytes a day. So that should definitely be usable uh, to serve files, most of which are going to be quite slow because they're going to be drivers and small software tools and maybe a game here and there that might be a zip file of one or two megabytes so you know it's definitely plausible that you know this FTP server is going to be able to be used by several people at the same time to download uh, files for their palm tops so next please have a look at the website yourself you know that's the whole point of this video is to set up a website uh, that will be very helpful to you in the future once there's more content on it. Uh, so have a look at it yourself. Here are the URLs. Um, I would love to hear your uh, remarks. If you encounter any issues, please let me know in the comment section. And it would be great if you could just drop a comment with your location and the browser you're using uh, just to give me an idea of uh, you know what your experience is using the website from your location and if you think that it's adequate and usable because you know I will be running this as a production site and I will be spending quite a bit of work during the next months to put a lot of content on it so you know please return to the website you know uh, once every few weeks or so uh, to see if there's any new content on there uh, i will also be adding to my main technical videos uh, whenever there's you know something of note added to the website i will start mentioning that at the end of my larger videos from now on uh, just to keep everybody in the loop about what's changing on the website and what, what new content has been added. Um, so yeah, have a look, see if it works and let me know if you are happy with the performance and the usability and just your general experience using the website from your location with your web browser. So finally, there is one remaining piece of our setup missing, storage. As you can see, having only two megabytes of memory for the web pages and images is not practical. As I will be adding a lot of content to it during the next few months, I will quickly run out of space. Unfortunately, I can't add any storage to the palm top as the PCMCIA slot is already occupied by the network card. This is where EtherDFS comes in, which you may remember from the net.bat file I showed you earlier in the video. EtherDFS is a very simple network file system, which enables DOS machines to mount remote Linux file systems locally as a DOS drive letter. It provides the same functionality as the SMB SIFs or NFS protocols, but instead of working on top of TCP IP, it works a level lower on the Ethernet layer by using MAC addresses of network cards instead of IP addresses. It's a simple, fast and compact solution which works with a DOS network card packet driver such as the NE2000 packet driver we are using on our palm top for the MTCP Suites web server software. Now after some testing I've discovered that it can actually share the driver and work together with MTCP's HTTP and FTP servers. So I won't be demonstrating the setup of EtherDFS and its functionality in this video, but in the next video, where I will demonstrate the configuration of my FTP server, I will be using it. Since the second palm top that will be running my FTP server, to be featured in the next video, will need a lot of storage for the large amount of downloadable files it will contain, I'll be using EtherDFS to mount an 8 or maybe 16 gigabyte file system from a Linux NAS 
onto the palm top for the FTP server to work with. I'll also be using it on the web server, leaving small common image files that are used throughout the website for navigation and logos, etc. on the RAM drive, so they're, they have fast access, and the remaining files of the website will be on an EtherDFS mounted file system drive letter, giving us as much storage space as we want on both the web server and the FTP server. But check that out in my next video about my FTP server coming out in a few weeks for details. This is the end of the video. I hope you liked watching it as much as I liked creating it. Um, and I would like to appeal to all my viewers. Um, it takes a lot of time to research and develop uh, all these projects that I'm making videos for and it's also quite expensive finding the relevant uh, retro tech and hardware that I need to create these videos so I could really use your help uh, in order to continue making these videos um, I really need more subscribers um, I'm currently at about 250 subscribers subscribers and it would be really helpful if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet to do so now just click the subscription button and click the bell icon if you want to get updates on new videos in the near future um, and consider leaving a like and a comment thank you for watching